Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to my first weekly wrap up of 2021. Yes, I know it's only the third day of the year, but the way that I did this is that to kind of put all of my yearly stats together, I kind of like ended my yearly stats on like the 28th of December and everything I've read since then, I've put into the new year. So there is, you know, I did only read four books so far that are January books, but I've been counting them all to this. Um, and even though I haven't filmed my end of the year stats yet, it will be happening soon. So anyway, we have 10 books to talk about in this one, which is just crazy. I had a really fun binge with some of these. Um, I read some of these for a secret TBR video that will be in a vlog coming up, so I won't like point out which ones are for that, but I'm still going to talk about them in this wrap up because not everybody watches reading vlogs, I understand that. But before we do that, we do have a new channel member to welcome. We have my friend Steph from Novelty Corner. She joined at the Sassy Supporter level. Thank you so much, Steph. That means so much to me that you support what I do here. Um, if you've never checked out Steph, definitely do it. She has a great channel. Um, also, her accent is just beautiful to listen to. So that's something that I like is finding people's voices who are very soothing to me because I listen to a lot of booktube. I don't necessarily watch it. I often am listening when I'm at work. But anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and dive into this. And the first one that I need to talk about is Tragic King by Sparrow Beckett. This is the conclusion to the Severn duology. Um, this is a pretty messed up series <laughs> or duology, but it's really great. It is um, BDSM with a hard um, emphasis on the s &M, on the sadomasochism in this. Uh, we have a real serious sadist and someone who really is masochist and they are a match made in hell. It's fantastic. And this one started with um, Feral King, which I read last week. I was the last book I finished last week. And I mean, I just went ahead and admitted it in that one. This series ends up being a menage, um, which was one of the selling points to me. So I want to tell you that too. I actually have a menage recommendation video coming soon. I'm going to be filming it today. People have been asking and asking for it. And I wanted to make sure that I had, because menage can go either way. I feel like menage is either like my favorite thing I read that week or it is a disaster. And so I really... I really wanted to make sure that I had a good list of options for that. But anyway, this wraps up what started in that one. This one, our hero, one of the heroes name is Severin, and he's actually kind of a hermit. He's in his 30s, and he has a pretty tragic past, and his family actually hires him a companion, and that's what happened in the first one. Um, this younger woman who I think she's just out of college, but she has experience being people's companion, normally old people. And she gets hired to be his companion and make sure that he eats. He's kind of a tortured artist. He does sculptures, like metal sculptures and like welding and stuff, which was a really unique career for our hero. But he has a very small social circle because he's a hermit. It's just his family and a friend. And this one friend who's actually the one who like introduced his him to BDSM and our hero doesn't like to be touched. And so BDSM kind of like affords him a way to have a lot of control over that. But when he meets our heroine, Minnow, who becomes his companion, he's still a virgin because he has watched and interacted in some BDSM, but never sexually before because he didn't want to be touched. And so his friend who introduced this to him, he is also a dom but he will submit only for his friend because he loves him so much so we end up being in this like two doms and a sub but there's one dom who's like the dom dom of it all and it was great I actually love reading um menages like that um they make me really happy but this one was just really well written and I had a great time so I gave this one a 4.5 stars for me it was because and this happens in romances a lot is it just cut off at the wrong time for me like it just like we had so much trauma that we went through and like getting our characters emotionally to the right place and then it just ended 
And so there was a tiny little epilogue to it that I was like, this wasn't enough after everything we went through. And I wish that, because sometimes an author will do a duology and then like a side novella. And I feel like these guys needed a novella. Just my opinion. Then I read another menage and this one was a mafia menage and it is called Heat of the Night by Nicole Stewart. This was a four star read for me and I'll get into why. So in this we have kind of a mafia prince and his bodyguard and they have been together um, for 10 years but it has to be a secret. Um, one of the things I love about mafia is that it's kind of like living in like Regency, Regency England or something but in modern times because there are just really strict rules and there are arranged marriages and there are things like that happening. And in this one, um, our mafia prince, he can't be with a man because his family needs him to marry and continue the line and they're not very accepting of, <clears throat> of gay men and so it would not be good and how would he get his men to respect him and stuff like that. And so he has had to hide this relationship with his bodyguard and best friend since they were in high school. And it's, it's, it's really hard to see. But then the way that our female character gets brought into this menage is that her father gets into some trouble. As you do in the mafia, those, those foolish fathers getting into trouble. <clears throat> and so our... Our hero, though, is with his father, the Mafia Don, when they are interrogating this guy. And he offers that if he marries the daughter, which will be a punishment for them, even though it's not in, like, the Mafia world because she's getting to marry a prince, but it's basically going to be taking her captive. And so if anything, if the father does anything else to piss them off, like, he has control over the daughter. So this obviously causes a lot of strife because... His boyfriend and bodyguard, they've just been waiting, basically trying to wait out his father. And like once his father dies, they could, he'll be in charge of the mafia and he can have whoever he wants. And now he's going to willingly, because it's his idea, he's going to willingly marry this girl. And so he thinks to make all these deals with her. And also, I like this, I, I love this trope a little bit. He's never been attracted to women, really, like, at all. He, it's just been him and his friends since they've, like, went through puberty together and discovered that they loved each other and they've been with each other all this time. And so now he's married to this woman that he's starting to have feelings for because he sees how brave she is and strong she is. And they have to go on a fake honeymoon together. And so it's his wife and he also has a boyfriend. And so it's a weird mix of things. But then... The bodyguard, um, he starts also watching the wife and they have this strange connection too. So it just kind of ends up, it reminded me a little bit of Katie Roberts, the Lamy dynasty. I can never pronounce it except that guy's an actual prince and it's okay for him <clears throat> to be gay. But anyway, this was only four stars for me because, because it was a very slow burn getting to the menage part, which is okay because it's, it's quote-unquote believable to me that we wouldn't just all three be okay being in this relationship together like I get it however once we got there again it just ended too soon and there was some interesting choices made with the mafia part of things that I wish we had talked about a little bit more and we're just kind of done then so yeah and the thing I noticed about Nicole is I Nicole Stewart this author has a lot of menages and most of them are all like shorter ones so this was one that she made a long one like, it's a full-length novel, and I just loved so many things. I love that it was a mafia menage. I've only read one other one of those, and it didn't work out. Um, and so there was just a lot I loved about it, but it didn't bring it all to fruition enough for me. And that doesn't always happen. It's hard to do that in a regular romance, even harder in a menage, because you're dealing with a lot of relationships. But I'm a big fan of any menage where, like, the male-male couple is already a thing, um, and they're really tight and then they end up like sharing somebody and you'll see that when I make my menage video that that's kind of what my like thing is. Okay, so then I read a couple um, historical sexy novellas. So there's this author, author named Nicola Davidson and she actually wrote one of the novellas in the Duke I'd Like to F series and I 
adored it. And I had actually read one of her novellas before, which had a submissive hero in it. And that was actually the second book in a novella trilogy called the... I literally can't remember the name of the trilogy, but it is the seduction or surrender to sin, the devil's submission and um, seduction of Viscount Vice. Those are the three of them. And so I had to still read the seduction of Viscount Vice and surrender to sin. So surrender to sin, which is the first one, is about this woman who her family's trying to marry her off to this like sexual sadist asshole, just this horrible older guy. And so she decides she's going to ruin her reputation so that they won't make her do that. And so she goes to this notorious sex club, which is the club that our three heroes from those novellas own together, and asks him to help ruin her. And so he's like, sure, I'll help you do that. And it's very like, you know, this is a 100-page novella. And so right away, though, they have this really good rapport with each other. And it's really cute. I really like it. And so they start doing all these sexy things and, like, trying to get caught. But this horrible, horrible guy, like, he has so much power that he just keeps ordering people who see them together to, like, not see it. And it's so frustrating because our hero was like, what the hell do I have to do to get this guy to think I'm a whore? <laughs> so it's kind of funny. Um, but her, the problem is, is that this guy is a, the guy that her parents are marrying her to. He's a sexual sadist, so he just wants to use all of these as reasons to beat her. And she's like, no. So it was pretty cute. That doesn't sound cute. And I just said that's pretty cute. But it was because of the relationship between those two and the sexy situations they keep getting themselves into. It was really fun. And then I read Seduction of Viscount Vice, which is the third one. And this one was fun because um, this one was a friends to lovers. And this woman is undercover as a man. And she had been with Viscount Vice before. His name is Ian. Um, and he had actually, she had actually given him her virginity like 10 years ago. And then she got caught and so she ran away and she's been like undercover as a man. This like one wasn't as clear to me about like what was going on, but, um, she basically wants like a job at his club, the, the club we've mentioned. And he has a lot of, like, anger, but is still super turned on by her because she's this woman that they had these, this, like, day of pleasure together. And then they got caught and he had to, like, leave and they've never seen each other since. Um, and so, yeah, it was good. Both of those are four stars for me. Like, I will recommend those in a certain situation. Like, um you know, historical novellas or novellas with sex clubs or novellas with like, you know, stuff like that. But they're of, a, of itself. I, my favorite one is still The Devil's Submission because it had a submissive hero and that one is a marriage in trouble. And, you know, his wife like learns to be dominant for him because that's what he needs. And that one's still my favorite, but I'm glad I've read the whole trilogy now. Um, and we got to see a couple glimpses of Devil and his wife. Um, which I really liked because I read books one and three and that one was number two. So in the one, I got to see him like longing for his wife and we hear about him having to like hide his submission um, because he's one of the owners of the sex club and he's expected to be a dom and he doesn't want to. And then in the third one, we get to see his wife because they're back together, which is what happens in the second one. And I just, it just made me want to read that one again, which I probably will. Um, da, 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 da. okay, so then I read another Donna Fletcher. So I read one of hers last week too. Um, this one, I'm still waiting for it to come in the mail because it's taking too long. Um, but this is Under the Highlander Spell by Donna Fletcher. This is book two in the Sinclair Brothers series. And so this series is really interesting and I'm actually going to talk about this series in my, in my Scottish recommendation video in like more detail because that's why I like read these books was to read some more Scottish ones because I wanted to I've been buying up all these Donna Fletcher because they're the ones with these like gorgeous covers here I'll show you I think I have one of them here where is it oh yeah they're the ones with these like gorgeous covers there's the bound by a warrior is one of them too and so I started reading some of those and these are um it's about the four Sinclair brothers and, but the way that the story's told, you kind of need to read them in order because there's this overarching mystery 
that each brother is getting closer and closer to the answer. Um, and that is at the beginning of the book, which this one was, um, what was the first one called? Let me see. I have it in here. Return of the Rogue. Return of the Rogue was the first one, and that's about the oldest brother. So the oldest brother and the youngest brother in this series were kidnapped by barbarians. This takes place in like the 1400 Scotland, something like that. And so there's still some barbarian tribes up in Scotland and stuff. And in that one, that brother came home to an arranged marriage, and he didn't want it because number one, he thought the girl he was arranged to marry is kind of a weenie. <laughs> That's easy way to say it. That she wouldn't be strong enough to be his bride. And then number two, he was planning to still go find his brother. And so having a wife would just get in his way. So that was the first one. I love that book. This is the second one. And this is about the next oldest brother. And under the Highlander spell, he is also trying to find this younger brother. And now in the last one, his brother is the Laird. And so he can't just go wherever he wants. And so this brother's looking for him and he hears of this witch who healed his brother. And so this woman, she's not a witch. Her name is Zia, Zina, Zia. I can't, I'm not sure. And she is a healer. And oh my gosh, she's so amazing. And she actually is from this village that is this, like, it's not magical, but I like want it. It's this hidden healing village that it's obviously not too well hidden because people are brought there to be healed with no questions asked. So barbarians, Highlanders, Englishmen, anyone can come and, you know, they will care for you and they'll send you on their way. So they're almost like this medieval hidden, hidden, uh, or this Highland hidden hospital or whatever. And so, um, it's not Lachlan. What's the name of the hero on that one? I don't have the book in my hand, so I can't remember what his name is, but because Lachlan is the hero of the one I'm reading. I can't remember, but he actually stops her from being burned at the stake because she had went to this village that was sick and she helped them. And inevitably, if people don't understand what she's doing to heal, they assume that she's a witch. And so she's actually about to be burned at the stake and she's just like feeling so sorry for them. She actually is having a very like, kind of like Christ-like moment where she's like, you guys don't know what you're doing. I just want to help you. I, you know, she has... She's from a village that's very learned and healing. And so our Scotsman rides in and she's the one who knows where his brother's from. And she's like, I will take you where he is. I, I know where your, your brother is. I'll take you there. Um, because the last that she knew, he was staying in her village to be healed because something had happened to him. And so he rescues her from being burned at the stake and, and she takes him to her village and his men aren't allowed to come in because they have their weapons. She's like, no weapons are allowed in here. Um, and you can only come if you come in peace. And you may not hurt or take anyone. Now, these are all rules that are just everyone agrees to so that this healing place can live. Um, because it's not like it's sanctioned by the church or that there's any reason why people can't. That is just the rules that everyone's agreed to. So there's that. But anyway, they get there and his brother is gone already. And her grandmother, who's like the head healer or whatever, is like, there is a journey that this brother is on. Ronan is his name, and I can't step in the middle of it. That's between your brother and the journey that he's on. And so, so this brother is like, no, we're so close. He was just here, and they missed him. And so that's the thing that is happening through this whole series is we keep hearing bits and pieces about this brother. And like, I'm reading the third book, which is the one I just showed you, The Angel and the Highlander, which, gosh, this book is really great too. This series is fantastic. And the fourth book is about Ronan. So I know we're going to find out where he is, but you really do need to read this series in order. But I'm loving the Donna Fletchers that I'm reading. I'm, oh, they're just so... It's hard to explain too because they all they have a lot of action there's actually been some barbarian raids that we've seen there's been some some fights that we've seen in there there's healing happening there's witch trials happening but they are just so cozy like they're so comfortable and i really enjoy how the conflicts are worked out in these specifically the first book loved it in the second book they've all just been like this well 
it's so cozy. Like, it's just so cozy and I love it. And so I gave that one a 4.5 star as well. It may be a 5 star. I don't know. It just, I think part of it is that things, things aren't working out that easy. But it just feels too easy. I don't know. That's not a good reason. I love it. I highly recommend them. But please do start with The Return of the Rogue if you read this series. I just... I don't often push you that you have to read series in order when they're historicals, but specifically for the Sinclair Brothers, I don't know about any of her other books yet, but specifically for the Sinclair Brothers, I highly recommend you start at the beginning um, because otherwise you're going to miss out on this beautiful build that there is for this brother Ronan. Because I'll tell you, after I read the first book, I really wanted to skip to Ronan's book. Like, so bad do I want to read Ronan's book, <laughs> but I'm holding myself back from it. I like literally have it in the other room so that I'm not staring at it here. And I just don't often do that. I'm often like, you can read however you want. And at the end of the day, you can read however you want, but I don't advise it. So there we go. I only have 10 books to talk about guys, and I'm still talking for too fucking long. Oh my word. All right. So next I read Fake Out by Eden Finley. This is a male-male fake dating book. And this is the beginning of a series, I guess, that are all male-male. I don't know if they're all... I think they're all supposed to be fake dating because the series is called Fake Boyfriend. So I think they all might be that. I picked this one up on audio as well as it is on Kindle Unlimited. And this book is such a weird setup. So this guy, um, he, w he dated one girl for like a really long time in a small town and... He broke up with her because she was really pushing him to marry her. And he broke up with her by saying he was gay. And then he moved to New York. And every time he goes back home, he, like, pretends to be gay so that he doesn't have to be, like, face the consequences of this. So it's a pretty shitty thing to do. Like, I think we can all agree. I think we can all agree. Well, then what happens is he happens to run into the girl that he this girl that he lied to about it and she's getting married and so she invites him and he's like oh I have a boyfriend which is a lie obviously <laughs> and so she invites him and his partner to the wedding and so he's like oh my god what am I gonna do I'm gonna and his friend is like how about you come clean and so he asks his best friend at work if he can borrow her brother because her brother is gay and so there is actually kind of like a trade that happens because our one hero, he, his brother is a athlete and the gay hero that is going to help him out is a, like trying to become an agent. So they're going to make that trade. And so he comes in, it's kind of like sweet though, because I will tell you this, like it isn't a like gay for you story. And it isn't as horrible, this person isn't as, like, horrible as that explanation makes it sound. And I don't want to tell you why, because that was kind of the best part for me, because this is one of the books that I read for a secret video. So you'll have to wait till a vlog comes out about that. But I, was, I wouldn't have read this book if I wasn't reading it for this reading blog and well I ended up giving this book a three stars it wasn't because of the like fake gay part of it because that is actually explained in a way that I understood what the author was trying to do and I didn't feel like wow because we need people pretending to be gay to get out of relationships because that is a cliche that just sucks it just sucks but that's addressed in the book and our hero gets called out for it and we are seeing a sexual journey for him that isn't as simple as he was pretending to be gay. Does that make sense? But the reason I gave it three stars is that this initial like wedding part and fake dating stuff is like pretty short part of the book. And then there was parts of this where it just drug on and I ended up skimming. And then the conflict that happened is I was like, what is this? Con Why is this conflict? Why is this conflict? And so it definitely wasn't the setup that ruined it for me. And it isn't ruined. Like, again, it's a three star. Based on my new rating system, which we are using in 2021, that means that I enjoyed it while I was reading it. I maybe skimmed some part of it. I would recommend it in specific situations, but I, like, wouldn't read it again, and it's not a favorite. So there's take that for that. Um, if you want to try a fake dating male male, it was cute for that. That's what I wanted. And it was really in the second half of the story 
that it fell out for me. Um, then I read To Seduce a Highlander by Kerrigan Byrne, the only physical one of these that I have in my hands. Um, I had been waiting to get all of these because this is a set of nine, not that this one isn't, but this is a series, the Highland Magic Collection by Kerrigan Merm. It's a set of nine novellas that are about these different kind of magical beings in the Highlands. So there's the McLaughlin Berserkers, which is what this one's about, the McKay Banshees, and the Demore Druids. And so this one is the Berserkers. So a Berserker is like a legend where these uh, Highland warriors get a taste of, um, like the smell of blood, a taste of blood turns them into these like fierce warrior beings. The only time I've ever heard of them before is in IAD, the Immortals After Dark. There's a character who's a berserker, um, which means they have immense power in battle, but are usually doomed to die in horrible ways is generally how it goes. And so the way that this works is there's three brothers in here and there's a novella about each brother. And actually like the first one is pretty short. Like the first one is only like 50 pages, but then the next one, like the reason why it worked for me is because each of these stories is building on each other. So this is three novellas, but they're kind of facing one issue within this book. So it really does work as a collection. Um, and so the first one is about Roderick, who is kind of like stuck in his berserker form in a certain way. And so berserkers all have a mate. And so when they find their mate, they bond with them and then they have more control over their berserker. So finding a mate can be a good thing or bad thing because maybe some of them don't want more control over their berserker or not. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed this. I had a feeling I would because it's Kerrigan Byrne. I did end up giving this one four stars uh, just because it's not going to be for everyone. And it mostly is like some pretty fun smutty scenes because it has those like, if you like a blooding in Immortals After Dark, you're going to like this. It has Highlanders and it has magic and it has... Um, which, okay, it's called the Highland Magic Collection. So excuse me for being obvious, but yeah, I don't know. So it was just really fun. I just flew through it and I have the next two collections. I actually had been gifted um, one of them by my friend Shay and it was the second one. And then I had bought the third one and I realized that I hadn't bought the first one. And then I ordered this and then it got lost and I had to order a replacement. And so I wanted to start this collection so much sooner and it took forever, <laughs> but then I finally got it, and I just loved it so much, the covers of these ones, so I'm very excited to read the Banshees and the Druids, and I like that she picked paranormal beings that aren't as popular and they aren't used as much, and yeah, I just really like that a lot, so it's Kerrigan Byrne. It was a great time. If you want to read shorter bits of hers, um, definitely check it out, so yeah, this was fun. All right, then a couple last ones. So I read The Queen of All That Dies by Laura Thalassa. Oh boy. So this, it was very hard not to binge all three of these, but I had something come up that I couldn't, but I'm definitely going to read the next two of these. This one is so hard to explain to. So I thought this was a fantasy romance and by this cover, you might think that too, okay? I have been hearing people recommend this book to me. They were like, oh, read Laura Thalassa, Laura Thalassa. And so I've only read one Laura Thalassa. I've only read Pestilence. And I read it way before it was a thing. But I haven't read the Bargainer series. And I hadn't read this series. And I haven't read the rest of the Four Horsemen. I just hadn't. And to be fair, it's just because I, I haven't got around to it. It's not because I have any prejudice against it or don't want to. With the Four Horsemen, I am waiting for them all to be out because I've heard that some are good and, and some are okay and I just want to read them all at once. And in the Bargainer series, it's honestly, they've been built up to me so much that I'm like afraid to read them at this point. But I know that I probably will like it because it gets compared to A Court of Miss and Fury a lot or maybe even some Hades and Persephone retellings, which we're going to get to. I also read one of those this month or this week, which was great. Um, but this is actually a science fiction romance. It's dystopian. And it is, you know, we're at the like, we've had 
a great crisis and there's now a king who rules most of the world and then there are some renegade pop-up groups and there's also a western united states that's trying to broker a peace deal with the king and so we get introduced to serenity who is an emissary she's only 19 and she's her father's like understudy at this and so she is going to the uh to negotiate with this king whose name is lazuli king uh, I can't remember his other name, but, like, he's th this badass king who is a horrible dictator and a killer, supposedly, and all these things. And so she gets brought in for these peace deals, and when he sees her, he is instantly like, I want her. And here's the thing. She didn't know this, but that was the hope of her commanding officer is that they would set a little honey trap for this king. So she starts being kind of paraded around this guy, starts having private dinners with the king, and he eventually is willing to broker a peace deal if she will marry him. And so she's forced into this. This is a very strong hate. hate. It's still a hate where I'm at. It's a hate to marriage, but we're still enemies. <laughs> because I've only read the first one. There is a cliffhanger after it, So, but all three of these are out. I just haven't finished them yet. You probably will hear more about them in next week because I'm planning to finish them once I get my book club books read because I need to get some book club stuff out of the way before I go any further into a binge. <laughs> it's been it's been crazy. Plus with like all the Bridgerton, that's the thing too. I didn't I should have said this at the top. Like all the Bridgerton stuff really cut down on my reading because I did, you know, I got all that stuff filmed and then there was a lot of like commenting and talking about it and then family stuff. So I didn't get as much reading done as normal, which is fine. Ten books, guys. You know, I'm not losing my touch or anything, but it did kind of hold me back from a few things, right? So anyway, I only read the first one and it had a cliffhanger, but it is amazing, especially because the king is so into her right away and she just continues to be like, dude, I'm never going to love you. I'm never going to love you. And he's like, you will love me one day. And it's just so like... We see him start changing things for her, and then it becomes clear that we have a roadblock, which I won't say what it is, and the king is devastated by this blood rocket, blood rock, roadblock, and is willing to do anything he can to remove it. I can't tell you what it is, but it is so good. It was great. Um, I need to finish this trilogy, but I gave this one a 4.5 stars. And we'll really see how the whole series rounds its way out. But I really liked it a lot. Loved it. So then, because as I said, I was feeling a Hades and Persephone retelling. And so I did it, guys. I read A Touch of Darkness and A Touch of Ruin, which I didn't know the third book of this wasn't out yet. So I'm kind of pissed. It doesn't come out until May. But this is the Hades and Persephone retelling that is literally Hades and Persephone. Like, they're called Hades and Persephone. There's no illusion. We are living in... I, w I called this paranormal because it seems to be set in modern times, but, like, the gods are a thing. So, like, they're out and people know who they are. But it also seems like the world is kind of remade and that it's only this area. So, I don't know if it is fantasy or not. I would say it's both. Like, it feels paranormal and fantasy. So I don't know. They have elements of both because it seems modern, but yet the world seems like it's a completely made up world because things don't work the same way. But yeah, we have modern things. So that's why I'm not sure which one, because I know fantasy is if it's its own world with its own rules, then it is. But also this has more. But anyway, whatever the point is, we have Persephone, the daughter of Demeter and her mother, her mother has been letting her go to school and get a job, even though her mother wants her to be with her all the time. And also Demeter has kept Persephone, Persephone a secret because they know that Demeter has a daughter, but nobody knows what she looks like or who she is. And Persephone wears a glamour all the time. So she is getting a job becoming a reporter. And then one night her friends, they get an in to go to Hades club. And so they go to Hades club and she's just there and she meets this dark stranger and he's teaching her how to play poker. Well, surprise, she actually was playing poker with Hades and she lost three rounds. And so this tattoo appears on her with these dots on her arm and she owes him a bargain. 
and he did trick her into this bargain. And the bargain is she has six months to create life in the underworld or she will belong to him forever. So the thing is, her powers aren't like her mother's and she actually causes life to wither and die and not to create life. And so Hades has the, he has many powers because he's one of the three staple gods, you know, Zeus, Poseidon, and Hades who roll over the sky, the earth, and the underworld. And so he has many, many vast powers. Um, and so he had, one of his powers is when he makes his bargains, like he can look at a person and see what their greatest vice is or their greatest, like, you know, and that's what he'll make his bargains off of. And so he knows that she has a weakness for this. And so it's kind of this impossible bargain she's entered into. And so he, she has six months to do this. So like every day after work, she goes to the underworld and he has a garden built for her and she's trying to grow something in this garden. And meanwhile, she needs to keep this a secret from her mother because her mother would not be okay with this. And number two, she is just so enamored with Hades. Like every time they're around each other, there's this sexual chemistry that is bananas. And I listened to the audio for both of these two and the woman, her, I think her name is Meg Rylan is the name of the narrator and the voice she does for Hades, it's a panty drencher. I'm telling you, it sure as hell is. It was great. It was great. So I gave these four, I gave four, five stars to the first one. Okay. A touch of darkness is great. A touch of ruin, I'm torn between a four and a 4.5. I think I gave it a four star in like my Goodreads because here's the thing. I, I really loved how we continue the story, which I will keep a secret, but it does definitely feel like a middle book for the kinds of conflict that we're having. You know, that like cyclical conflict where we just can't trust each other and we keep breaking trust, but like, I love you so much, but I keep hurt. We keep hurting each other. And it happens just a few too many times. Okay. Just a few too many times. And particularly Persephone gets real frustrating in some points for me because I just can't tell you. I love Hades. I love this Hades so much. He's amazing and just sexy and dangerous and fantastic. And some of the stuff when Persephone just won't fucking talk to him, I'm like, bitch, your man will help you if you will talk through this issue. And so I will get kind of frustrated with her. But I gave them five star and four star. And we'll see what the third one, which is supposed to be a touch of, is it a touch of madness? <laughs> Maybe a touch of madness. No, a touch of malice. A touch of malice comes out in May and I want it right now. So thanks Scarlett Sinclair for that. So anyway, I still managed to talk for 40 minutes about 10 books. So there you go. This wasn't as short as I thought it would be. But thank you again to my new friends who've joined the channel memberships. Make sure you check out um, the join section in the description if you want to. Um, if you're interested in getting more access to me and early access to videos and we have a monthly live chat together, make sure you check that out. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.